to docs and I'm the interviewer this week so if you've seen the last few vlogs we've been learning how to navigate emotions and difficult diagnosis and things like that so I'm the interviewer today and I'm pretty sure my patient has like back pain and a fever and I haven't actually read up on it we have an hour of large group before we go to our small groups so I'm gonna like read about the case during the large group and because I need to understand the diagnosis in order to explain it to the patient like during the interview kind of thing. So I'll let you know how that goes. We'll see if I have like a over the top amazing actor who's like super dramatic standardized patient or if it's just gonna be like more chill and just more like emotionally charged. Can't wait to let you know. It's always a little bit nerve wracking interviewing in front of eight of your classmates and your dog's coach but it's a chill atmosphere and either way it gets over like like if we split. It's, here and there and gone before you know it, so let's go. <laughs> survived um did my interview i felt super comfortable it actually wasn't that bad at all i'll tell you all about it after my meeting in three minutes because at 12 o'clock i'm meeting with my service learning group mentor person and yeah the organization's called breakthrough it's really cool i've talked about it in other videos but if you want to know about it because it's like actually something i'm excited about versus like usually i complain about the things in my school ask me in the comments and i'll let you know so meeting first then walk at oakley and eat lunch <laughs> before h and s It's already 12.57 and I'm gonna be late to H&S, so we'll chat this evening, guys. <laughs> Wednesdays are long days, but finally, let's talk about dogs. Okay, so my patient had basically symptoms that we had a high suspicion for what's called epidural abscess. The only reason I know that is because they give us an article to read about like the thing the patient has before we even get to the interview and what their chief concern is gonna be. So I was like all ready to explain like in layman's terms and like help him understand like his diagnosis and blah, 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 but that's not like really how the interview went. We sat down, did a normal HPI, like when did this start? What do you experience? Like tell me more about this. And then what we're working on is sharing information. 
so what the information basically that I was like really focusing on sharing was just like letting him know that because of his symptoms I would like to admit him to the hospital to see if it is this epidural abscess that like we have this suspicion for because in this scenario he was coming into a free clinic and he didn't have insurance blah 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 and then how the interview more so went versus like instead of just like sharing information about like what is this and like da 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 it was he was living, like his daughter and her two kids who were two and six lived with him. He didn't have insurance, he can barely pay the rent, like he needs to, he can, like, like he can't miss work. And he was so worried about that, he's like, I don't care about myself, I care about them, like I just can't see them going on the street, like I need confirmation that you are going to like help me, like make sure this stuff, they don't end up on the street. So my goal was just like kind of be like, okay, like, this is my priority too like we will make sure like i will make sure the social workers talk to you like we will get this figured out but the best way to get you to work like back to work as soon as possible is getting this figured out kind of thing and like that's what he ultimately wanted kind of thing so then my classmate um so her patient had just celebrated being cancer free for a year and then she had to share results of this like mri that showed metastasis to her spine so she had to break the news that like your cancer's back and that patient kind of like cried for a couple minutes and she had to like work on like staying silent and just like waiting for the patient to be ready to like hear more and talk about next steps kind of thing and yeah so we're learning great stuff like even though this is like fully f fake scenarios and like there's a bit of that when you're actually in the room it's like this isn't actually happening but it's gonna happen in real life and I think it's really really good it's one of the better parts of our curriculum and that's how it went today so hopefully you enjoyed hearing about too many days in the darkness without a glimpse of the light running tired and broken and scared but i swear i'll never give up the fight i see you broken and beat down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender but Darling, you were meant to survive With every star We are born again Alright, it's nine. I want to geek out like all day every day on YouTube stuff, especially being in this course, but I can't. I gotta do med school too. I'm going to put in these headphones and do this little 60 minute timer because I still have like 450 cards to do. So, one hour, no distractions. I've been very distracted all morning. Okay, I'm basically just trying to make you more accountable. So, I'll tell you in one hour how that goes. <laughs> just like a seed in a garden. Holy moly, that worked like a charm. I did not check my email, I did not check Instagram, I did not go on my YouTube channel. I focused for the last 53 minutes and got my hockey cards done. So, win of the day. Key to productivity is being intentional.
Good morning, it is Friday. <sighs> Last night was super productive. I'm gonna try and focus on the positive that I did what I wanted to do and not the negative of that I didn't just do it first thing in the morning like I should have. Um, this morning, it's one of those mornings where I literally did everything that I planned out the night before, which is like the most satisfying feeling. If I could just do that every morning, like my life would be perfect. <laughs> I went through, oh shoot. JK, one sec, let me get, I have 10 minutes. Okay, <laughs> now I'm pretty sure I did everything on the list. Anki, well, it didn't get done, but I knew I wouldn't have time to finish, but I did it for an hour and 15 minutes. Anatomy practical, which is what I forgot, which I just, just, just did. Went through the histo lecture that I had Monday that I didn't go to, and then I went through the farm lecture that I didn't go to last night. And now I have at least reviewed everything from this week and made cards on it and I'm ready to go. I feel like, so we're learning radiculopathies and I don't know what the other one is, like the, the tunnel syndrome, well, like carpal tunnel, cubital tunnel. I don't know if that's a mile I still haven't figured that out. <laughs> I've been looking at my notes, but the thing I think is gonna come up, which I probably don't know all the details yet because they didn't emphasize it Tuesday when they taught it. Well, so here's an example of what I do know. If you have a C, five, don't know what to call it, radicu, no, I don't know what to call it, but if you have a C5 thing, then that is um, elbow flexion and shoulder abduction. The, and the way I remember it is picking up a $5 bill from my floor, and then I would have to flex and then abduct to set it right here. <laughs> and then like six is, I think of holding my hand in this position, like you know the waitresses that have a tray. So C6 is, elbow, flexion, wrist, extension. So we need to know that, but then we also need to know like for what muscle would be tested then, I don't know. What reflex is that? Maybe brachial, I don't know. So I learned a few of those movements related to the things, but obviously some knowledge gaps there. I don't know, like it's so, he didn't specify the difference between radiculopathy, which I know is like a specific area is affected versus myelopathy, which is like the whole spinal cord is affected. But like, what are the tunnel syndromes? Like just a compression of the nerve, not either of those things. I don't know. It's really cool to learn about though. So I think that's what's gonna get me on this quiz. We shall see. I'm gonna get ready and go. Bringing out the fight, yeah, bring on all the lightning Cause I'm looking for a hero, look inside the mirror I find Okay, wish me luck Carry the hurt when it gets too hard Pick it up, dust it off, when I fall down 11 I get up 12, don't need nobody else Yeah, I can save myself Got burned but I learned our scars make us who we are. Now I'm 10 feet tall over my deep. All right, guys, let's talk about grades in medical school. I'm gonna share my scores from this week's quiz and a lot of quizzes. Well, I'll just share the range and what I usually get and stuff. All the YouTubers I look up to share like taboo things like Ali Abdul, Catherine Manning, sharing exactly how much they make. And like, you can't like walk up to somebody, even if you're friends, you can't just be like, so what's your salary? Like, how much do you make? Like, and I think that's so dumb. <laughs> like, why can't, like, why is that taboo and why is that weird to talk about money? I don't know. But anyway, I've always wanted to like share those taboo things and like be open about it because I think there's a lot of benefits of like sharing those things. And first I kind of like wanted to give myself time to make sure I didn't like fail all of my exams in med school. I would definitely still share it after the fact, after I like I figured out my life, but I wouldn't want to share that like in the moment, you know? So, I got a 72 on this week's quiz. Oh, by the way, facilitator review was freaking heated. My classmates were angry this week. There was just like a lot, and rightfully so, like there was so much tested that like we did not learn, and that like is a completely different topic that we're gonna learn third week of MSK, and like it was freaking weird. Um, the thing I was worried about, did great on that, and then pharmacology kind of got me. But, like I said, 72 on this week's quiz. Happy about that. The vast majority of my exam quizzes have been in the 70s or 80s. I've had one 92, and that was from the first week of PCV, and I've had 
uh, a few like 60s, 62, 63 kind of things. Most of those were from renal and urinary when I was like doing my own thing and just watching sketchy videos. Um, so that's the range of my quiz scores from 62 was the lowest to 92, 91 was the highest. Um, Grades are like this weird thing in med school where like people like put the brightness all the way down because we're in the lecture hall when we get our scores released. So they turn the brightness all the way down and they like hover over their thing and like because everybody's around them and they don't want people to know. So like I do get it though because I've heard horror stories of like pre-med programs and med school programs having this toxic pre-med culture or like competitive like ripping out pages of textbooks so their classmate can't study it like psycho. So. Obviously, if people are gonna make you feel shitty about the grades you get, yeah, I would hide my grades too. But our school is pretty, like I feel like the vibe is pretty good at our school and I will end with pass fail schools. I was told during my interviews are less likely to be that competitive. Like we don't get ranked against each other till third year or end of first year, I don't really know, but it's pass fail. So technically my 60 and my 90, they're both just passes. <laughs> And that to me is what like kind of allows me to have the mindset of like, okay, study to pass, like have fun on the weekends. But anyway, that's my grade spiel. And I'm shocked by how much I'm able to like enjoy my free time and like go to the gym and enjoy my weekends and go on adventures in med school. Cannot believe it. And those are the grades that I get while doing that. I still pass. And hopefully this was helpful to know that you don't have to be a genius and ace all your quizzes in med school and uh, study your life away <laughs> as a first year med student. So that wraps up this week's vlog. And if you want to learn more about med school exams, be sure to watch my med school finals vlog because it's really informative about our tests in med school. So with that, I will see you in the next vlog.